Hello and welcome to the Betty Blocks product webinar of May 2022. Let's get started. Today's hosts, well, you see my face, Oliver Nijk. Uh, we have two product owners, Manouk van Gerben, product owner from the Actions team, and Ant van den Berg, the product owner from the Page Builder team. The goal of this webinar is to give the self-building, or the customers at least, a partners, developers, internal colleagues, and other attendees an insight in the current and upcoming product developments. So what you will hear from the product owners is some things that they have been working on and that they're going to work on. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A function in Zoom. We will try per segment to at least answer two questions live. And if a question is a bit um, well, too broad to answer for us immediately, we'll make sure to get back to you later via either email or any other way of contacting you. The webinar will also be recorded and will be sent to you afterwards. So if you do have any questions or if you think you've missed something, it'll be sent to you later. So for today's topics, the first part that we're going to talk about is what we have worked on. That is, uh, we're going to talk about the login form, the create form, update form, action buttons, and the custom action step. This is something that Anton is going to introduce. And for part two, what are we going to focus on? Uh, Manuk is going to talk about the next generation actions and some ease of use features. So without further ado, I'd like to give it to Anton for the beta forms using next gen actions. Yes, thank you very much, Odin. Let me uh, take over the screen. All right, so hello everyone. Uh, today I will be telling you everything uh, about what we've been working on, which is our beta forms. Um, we are currently busy um, finalizing uh, and uh, yeah, the, these beta forms and doing the, the last tests and uh, we aim to uh, release this and make them publicly available for everyone uh, in uh, all of our zones. Um, currently, uh, it is already available on production uh, via feature flag. Um, and I will be uh, walking you through it, uh, why we built this. And um, I will show you some demos on, uh, on how to use this. Uh, and then Manuk will continue on uh, how uh, we are going to add uh, more features to this uh, after this. So um, the beta forms. Uh, the main reason uh, that we started this initiative uh, is because we want to have a seamless building experience again. Uh, currently, a lot of our builders know that when you're building within our IDE uh, and you have to use the actions that are tied to our form components, uh, you sometimes still have to switch back to our old building environment. Uh, we uh, were blocked by this, by uh, the actions that were busy with their development. And uh, as they are uh, building quite fast recently, and they are quite aligned with the features that they're building, uh, we had to make sure that our form components were also connected to those actions. And uh, the biggest advantage of that is that all of that can be done uh, within the same platform and in the same uh, interface so that you no longer have to switch uh, between interfaces. So we can align our documentation, uh, everything has the same look and feel so that uh, new users of our platform, of course, uh, do not get confused with this uh, change in environments. Uh, another big reason that we are working on this is uh, future readiness. Uh, we are uh, busy building a new stack so that we can uh, have a better performance to provide to our more demanding customers, uh, and which is uh, what our actions are also going to do. And <clears throat> uh, next to that, uh, a very large uh, portion of uh, why we did this is also to allow you uh, to build custom steps. So this means that uh, the framework that we build is more aligned with the framework that we have for our components, uh, which means that uh, if you are a pro coder, uh, you are able to create your own steps. And I will uh, 
go into more detail after, uh, well, in the next few slides. Um, let's go to the next one. So uh, in our beta forms, uh, we will uh, support the, the following inputs, uh, which are also uh, available uh, currently on production in our normal forms. Uh, so the, the text uh, input, which will be based on our text property. Uh, then we have the text area, checkbox, email, password, phone number, URL. Um, the phone number and IBAN are actually uh, new ones that we currently didn't uh, yeah, support within uh, the inputs on uh, our production forms. Um, but yeah, let's continue next to that. Uh, our radios, uh, our number, price and decimal inputs, and also our autocomplete select uh, and date, date time and time properties. And all of these uh, are going to be based on the models and properties. Um, and those models and properties uh, will then uh, generate the form as you're currently also already used to uh, on production. Uh, but the difference will be that uh, a new action will be created, which I will uh, show you in a bit. Um, actually, I'm going to show that right now. So over here, you can see the, the production environment where I uh, prepared uh, a page. Uh, and here you can see uh, all the inputs uh, that are available. Uh, so the ones that I mentioned just now. Um, so these are all uh, available, uh, yeah, just as you would expect it. Uh, we did make some changes here. Uh, currently, they are uh, more rigid, as in you can only tie them to the models and properties uh, within your application. And we will uh, be adding more functionality to that later, uh, so that you, uh, as a more advanced no code, are also able to uh, yeah, not base it on any properties within your application. Um, so yeah, where you can see this, for instance, is that this radio input uh, is only being supported by our list property currently, uh, where in the future, we also want to be able to base this on a model again or uh, relational properties. But we will uh, dive more into that later. Uh, so uh, here in the sidebar, you can see uh, our normal components and to be able to use the beta uh, form components uh, we have added a toggle here and with, with this toggle uh, you're able to uh, to opt in uh, and you can see that uh, we have a different set of uh, components available here and when you add these to the canvas then they uh, well work uh, exactly like uh, you would expect so here you can uh, select a model. Uh, notice that indeed the uh, skip uh, without uh, configuration is currently gone, uh, as the initial scope is that we focus on being able to base them on uh, the models within your application. Uh, so if I select uh, any input here, so a guide, I can select a name and a description uh, and a status. And when I save this, uh, my form is created uh, just as before. And the biggest difference is that uh, over here, you can see that this action, uh, when I navigate to it, uh, is the new interface. And um, in this new interface, you're then able again uh, to add your own steps for the, the native steps that we will uh, provide with the initial release. Um, and also uh, you're able to add your, uh, your custom steps, which we'll, uh, I'll dive into uh, a bit later. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, basically the same functionality as our forms currently uh, provide, except that uh, they create new generation actions where all the functionality will be available again. Um, we also um, added our default prefabs for very common use cases. Um, and the advantages of these are, of course, that the action step and all the assignments uh, are done for you uh, so that you don't have to do this manually. Uh, so uh, within the sidebar, I'll show you in a bit, we have our login form 
And when you add your login form uh, on the Canvas, uh, you will be able to select your authentication profile again, and this will create an uh, authenticate user step. So let me show you. Quickly, uh, uh, quickly a question in between, uh, Anton from Paul. Uh, maybe you can answer it right now since you're here anyway. Uh, hi, Anton, I've missed this, but are the interactions still available and working with the beta forms? Uh, yes, they are. Well, there you have your answer. I don't know which interactions you specifically mean, um, but let me uh, let me just show you. Uh, so over here, I have my login page, and on this login page, you can see that I have a login form, and this is the the new login form. Um, which automatically created this authenticate user step. Uh, so an advantage here already is that we don't have to call a sub action, which is connected to our uh, well, the very five environment, so to say, but we can now handle this uh, within uh, the same environment. Um, and here you can see that the JAW token is being uh, returned and uh, we are still able to use our uh, login interaction to, to store that job token on this uh, application so that you're able to log in. So uh, let me show you that we also have our interactions. So over here you can see uh, on uh, when there's an error, I just show my error alert. And uh, when, uh, well, I'm loading, uh, the error alert goes away again. So you're still able to just use the interactions that you uh, are accustomed to use. Um, and let me show you real quick what this wizard would look like. Uh, oops. So I go to my login uh, and I would add this on the canvas. And as you can see, I can once again, select my authentication profile which is web user in this case, and uh, make sure that it redirects to uh, my homepage. Uh, save, you can see this is then added on the screen. Uh, when I would navigate to this action, then you can see that uh, the authenticate user step has been added and all the uh, assigned roles are being uh, mapped automatically. So this is uh, working similar as uh, how our forms currently work uh, on production, except that it's all uh, within the new stack uh, and all within the same interface without you having to, to switch to, uh, to Betty 5 to make any changes. And uh, let's see, uh, we also have the interaction. So on success, it uh, shows the login. And let's just see how this works in runtime right now. So I'm able to, to log into this application uh, by a few clicks of the button using uh, the login prefab, uh, yeah, using our new actions. So that's a, that's a very big win. Um, next to that, uh, we have our create form. And the create form can, of course, be used for uh, a lot of use cases. Uh, for the sake of this demo, I created a application where you can uh, can add guides, um, and I will uh, show you this uh, as well. It's quite similar to uh, also what it currently is on production. Um, so yeah, let's just dive right into it. Uh, so over here, I have um, my guides. And if I would go to Thank you very much. Yes. So here's my create form, uh, which was created uh, using uh, the prefabs again. Uh, and over here you can see that I also have uh, the refetch uh, of the data table, which is of course the, the interaction that we have and also uh, hiding uh, this drawer uh, after the create was successful. So uh, 
if I would go to this page, then let's see, then this is the, the, the page that I have created. And if I click on new, then, oops, well, it's not working. <clears throat> Could be that one of my forms is not being compiled properly. It is not. All right. Well, since it's broken, let's uh, just add a new one. Uh, so I can go over to my create form and I can add it to a column. And I say, I want to create a guide. Uh, I select a name and a description and press save. And as you can see, it has now successfully uh, added uh, this form uh, plus its input uh, to this uh, sidebar. And then I want to add an interaction that's uh, on action success. Uh, it's going to refetch my data table. And I also want it to uh, on action success to close the, or hide my drawer. Now let's see uh, if this form is going to be added uh, correctly. There we go. And demo. And let's see if it ended up in my database. Yes, there it is. So as you can see, uh, that was working as expected. Now let's see if we can also fix the update form. Uh, so uh, let's show my sidebar again. And now I want to show uh, the right tab where my update form is. I'm not very sure why this is not displaying right now. Uh, but then I can go for my update form and I drag it right in here. Say I want to, uh, oops, select my guides. And I want to update the name and description. See, I actually have to put this uh, within my data container. Go. So this is something that's uh, still in progress to be able to uh, map this better. All right, let's see uh, what the result of this is. did not include any uh, refetch, I believe. Uh, but we have dummy guide number one. Let's go to edit and uh, make it, uh, I don't know, 100. Update, Oop. send, that's not tight yet. Reload, and you can see that it's been updated. So I still uh, need to configure some, uh, some interactions to update this data table and uh, to close that sidebar. But as you can see, the update form was uh, well working uh, basically out of the box uh, after dragging that form uh, from the sidebar within the context of, uh, of that sidebar. Um, so yeah, that's the, the create uh, and our update form. Um, they will both be supported by the native uh, create and update step uh, that will be available within our uh, next generation actions. Uh, and that's it um, for uh, our beta forms uh, so far. Um, we also have next to our forms, our action button. And uh, the action button, what, what makes it stand out is of course that it creates a native action. 
uh, sorry, a next generation action. So it's not based on uh, our Betty 5 anymore. And a very common use case in this case is, of course, to delete a record. Uh, and here you can see in the screenshot already that I have my delete button. And I provide it with some context uh, from that data table so that it's able to delete that record uh, from uh, the data or the, the rows of the data table. So uh, well, let's see if this works. There we go. So it's already gone. Um, maybe a bit hard to show right now, but <laughs> at least you can see that uh, the amount of pages is uh, going down. Uh, so these are being deleted successfully. Uh, a nice pop-up message would be a good addition to this application. Uh, but yeah, that works. So let's see how that was set up. Uh, so here I have my delete data button. Uh, it's passing the ID uh, of the guide. And if I navigate to my action, you can see this is then the new action interface. Uh, there's a input variable, which is the ID of the guide that's being created. Uh, here I fetch the guide that I want to delete based on the input variable that I received from my page. And then I use the native delete record uh, action step to actually uh, delete this and uh, send that back to my page. And uh, yeah, so basically it's still working quite similar uh, to how it's currently working, um, except that everything is working within the, the new environment. And that's uh, it. So uh, let's go over to uh, the custom action steps. Um, so uh, when we are going to release this, that uh, will be at the beginning of this, uh, or sorry, uh, during this week, um, we will offer the native uh, authenticate user, uh, the native create, the native update, um, yeah, the, those steps and the native delete, sorry. Um, and soon we will also be, uh, yeah, uh, yeah gee, deploying the loop. Um, and what will follow is uh, something that Manuk will update you uh, with in a bit. Uh, but uh, there's still uh, quite some use cases that he, we won't be able to support. Uh, but if you are working together with a pro coder, uh, that gives them a lot of power to use it within this uh, new actions environment, as they uh, can uh, you know, add their own custom steps. Uh, and so they get a lot of power um, and flexibility to use that. So for instance, over here, you can see uh, that uh, I added some custom uh, steps to, uh, to this demo application uh, using uh, the command line interface. Uh, so be sure to check out this link uh, if you are a pro coder, of course, and, uh, and want to be able to support the, the no coders and citizen developers uh, using these new, action, and new actions. Uh, and what this allows you to do is, uh, well, basically uh, patch the holes that we currently do not support while we are also working towards adding more uh, native steps within the application. Uh, so for instance, uh, what I did over here is you can see that I added a, a button uh, to generate dummy data within this application. Uh, and the action that this is calling um, is a static loop. So static loop is uh, not actually something that uh, we will support initially uh, as we have the, well, the native loop, uh, which is going to be based on a collection. Uh, so I just, uh, you know, yeah, added my own static loop, uh, which is, uh, well, looping 10 times so that I'm able to add some uh, dummy data uh, to my application. So you can see we have the, the dummy guide and this is my dummy guide uh, as a description uh, to just, uh, yeah, uh, submit this data to my application uh, and add those records. Uh, so basically I um, make it quite hard coded right now, uh, but it does offer me the flexibility to, to be able to do that which is uh, of course very powerful. And the reason that they're indeed not native is because uh, we want to offer a certain flexibility 
uh, and reusability within those steps. Uh, and of course, yeah, get them on the standards that they uh, should be. Uh, so let's see uh, how this works. Um, so yeah, success notification wouldn't be nice, uh, but I'm adding uh, multiple records uh, to this application. Actually, it's probably failing right now because there's too much clutter. Um, but yeah, basically you were able to add more uh, steps yourself uh, within this environment uh, to, yeah, like I said, patch the holes that we currently do not support uh, and also offer you uh, the flexibility to do a lot more than that we currently do not support uh, within uh, the current actions that are available on uh, production. And that was it. Oh, okay, go, can you go back one slide? Okay. Yes, of course. Um, slide, gonna, gonna or... sort of, for now, I'm just going to combine because it's regarding the custom action steps. We got uh, two questions that I'm sort of going to combine quickly. Um, first, we got a question asking, well, if custom codes, if custom action sets, etc., are coming up. So you just answered that. But um, can you also tell us something about what kind of code or what the, the language is that supports this uh, code? And you also you already said that it can be enabled via command line, but mm -hmm. uh, what kind of uh, language are we going to going to use for that? And uh, Marcel asked the question: uh, Betty five actions give options to assign variables. I don't see them in the new action builder. Is this an option, or is this now left over to a custom function? So what uh, language are we going to use and how can we get those variables back in the new actions? Right, so yeah, for the language that we're going to use, uh, let's see if I can quickly show that. So over here you can see that I'm uh, playing around with uh, adding some custom steps. Um, and currently they're based on, uh, well, basically we use JSON to define the structure of your step. Uh, and then uh, you can use the output of those options uh, within a function. Uh, and here you can see that this is just uh, JavaScript uh, where you can uh, build your own custom functions uh, using, of course, the, uh, the helpers and tools uh, that are available. Uh, so be sure to check out the documentation. Uh, there's, there's quite some uh, yeah, good documentation available already to add uh, or, or base it on our native steps. Um, and here you can see that I'm also busy uh, fixing a redirect step uh, so that it can uh, redirect to a newly created record, for instance. Uh, very uh, hard coded, mind you, uh, but this is uh, just me testing it out. Uh, so I hope that uh, answers your first question. Um, then the second question, I believe it was for uh, the- Regarding the uh, assigned variables. Uh, the new, uh, the Marshall didn't see the option to assign variables to these new steps. Is this something that will be an option or is this left to custom functions? Um, I, I'm not 100% sure which variables are uh, meant in this case, but are these the variables that we're talking about? As in here, I'm able to, uh, of course, create a variable uh, currently give it a, a hard-coded uh, value. And of course you can use this, um, well, within any step of, uh, of this action. Uh, but, uh, so let's see, uh, guide, and I want to add a name. And here you can see that I have a local variable, which is hello, which is the one that I've uh, just created. So um, perhaps you were uh, expecting the variables to be available on the data top over here, as in uh, our previous design. Uh, but those variables are available uh, over here now on the, the start, so the input of the action. Um, and these are the ones that are always available uh, within the scope of the whole action. And of course, you can also make variables that are uh, available within the step of this action if you want to make them a bit more local, so to say. 
So I hope that answers your question. I see more questions are uh, coming up, so uh, let's but, uh, go. I'll, uh, yeah, if you can, uh, I think it's uh, wise for us to answer those via chat. That's uh, that's an option. Might be a bit better than if you can uh, continue to the next slide, then um, we can uh, start off with the next topics. Um, if you could uh, answer, or at least, yeah. Uh, and indeed, Marcel, uh, you just answered Marcel's question, so that's great. For the next slide, I'd like to give uh, the word to uh, Manuk. So we just talked about the new login forms for the page builder and the action buttons and custom actions that you can view in the nearby future or already work on, of course. And now we're going to par uh, go to part two, next gen actions and ease of use by Manuk. So Manuk, take it away. Thank you, uh, Odin. Uh, yes, so uh, let's talk about next generation actions, uh, what we have planned uh, to build in uh, Q2 uh, and uh, some new features uh, regarding uh, ease of use within our platform. Oh. Let's go back to the right slide. Um, let's start uh, with debug uh, logging. So uh, at this moment, uh, when you're new, using the new actions, uh, we don't have debug logging in the new IDE. So that means you have to switch back uh, to the previous environment. Um, and we want to have this in the new environment as well. Uh, so you don't have to switch anymore. Uh, so that's what we're uh, building at the moment. Uh, you can uh, debug your actions when you're uh, using your custom steps. There's a, a logging functionality in that uh, where you can uh, uh, write code what you want to log, uh, if you want to log errors or some information, some debug uh, logging information. Uh, and you can view that in the debug logging uh, overview. And for the no coder, uh, we have created a log step. Uh, that's uh, a step you can add to your action. Uh, you can see it on the right side in a screenshot. Um, you can uh, add this log message uh, before, after uh, a step. Um, you can write a message where you can uh, insert some variables as well. Um, so you're able to uh, debug uh, your action or to, uh, to log some variables you want to see um, how your action is going. So the pro coder is able to add it to custom steps and the no coder is able to use this log step. And both you can see in this, uh, uh, debug overview in the new IDE uh, very soon. Then files and image upload uh, in the new forms uh, and in the new actions. Uh, it is when we release it, uh, uploading a file or an image won't be possible. Uh, we're working at this uh, right now. So very soon it will be possible to add a uh, file upload uh, field to your form uh, and the actions uh, can handle it as well. Uh, so it's planned for Q2 as well. Next one is the native loop step to loop through a collection. Uh, for example, to loop through uh, all your orders to change the status, for example. Um, we're going to add this as a uh, no coder step as well. Also a condition step. This will be a uh, MVP version at uh, first. So first it will only uh, be possible to select a variable and the condition step will check if that's present or not. Um, and later we are going to add some new features. So for example, filtered rows. So you have some more possibilities uh, to, to filter your condition uh, variable. Um, next one is the uh, native call sub action step. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can reuse some actions. If there's a part of your action you want to use in multiple actions, you can make this a sub action and reuse it in, uh, in multiple actions. So this will be a, uh, a step as well. This, so the no coder can use this uh, as well. So there are a few new steps we're going to add. We have planned uh, for Q2. Uh, of course, this is not uh, all we're going to add uh, to the new actions. We uh, want to add uh, way more features to make it uh, easier and easier for you to use this. Um, but at least this is planned for Q2. 
And uh, please let us know uh, if you have any ideas what you think uh, we should add uh, soon to the new actions. Uh, we really appreciate your feedback and uh, we can use it in planning our roadmap. Then for the ease of use, we're working on some new features uh, to make it easier uh, for the no coder, uh, but also for the pro coder, everyone who's using the uh, page builder to build faster and easier uh, yeah, to make your pages. First new feature uh, is the enforce authentication profiles for pages. Um, this means that when you create a page, um, you have to uh, set your page settings. Uh, there you have to set an authentication profile, uh, but we want to make that easier. So uh, when you create a new page, you will see a uh, configuration screen where you can set your page name, uh, your page path. Uh, and out, uh, also choose uh, if your page is authenticated or public. Uh, so you don't have to go to settings uh, later on and, and set all your settings. Uh, you can do it right away. And we will make it able uh, within the authentication profiles that you can set one to default uh, so that, will, that one will always be selected. Of course, you can change it, uh, but you don't have to click every page uh, and to set your authentication profile. Next one is uh, we want to make uh, a new feature that you're able to select a, a public file in the page builder directly. So now you have to switch uh, to the uh, old IDE to go to your public, uh, public uh, images, public files. There you can uh, upload your file, your image, uh, then you have to uh, copy uh, your URL and then paste it in the page builder, which is a lot of clicks. Uh, for a relatively uh, easy uh, uh, function. So we want to uh, make it able that within the page builder, you can uh, select your public file directly, as you can see in the screenshot. And we want to make it able that you can upload your image uh, there uh, right away. So you don't have to click to another environment, go back just in a few clicks, you can upload your new file. Uh, next one is also uh, to save you clicks going to different parts in the platform. So if you're creating a page, uh, you want to build a form or you want to build a data table and uh, or, or when you just start, you don't have the model or property you want to use. So um, yeah, we want to make it able to create a model and properties within the page builder. So you just, while you're creating your page, your form, your data table, you can just add models and properties. So you don't have to switch to the data model uh, every time and go back. So that will save you a lot of clicks and will yeah, make your flow of developing uh, much better. Then uh, the last one I'm going to uh, tell you something about is to reconfigure forms. Uh, when you now uh, add a new form or a, uh, uh, when you edit, then you will see a uh, model to configure uh, your form. You can add, uh, you can choose your model and your properties. But when you want to edit it, then you have to work with the inputs and, and change everything uh, manually. Uh, we want this, uh, to be easier uh, and therefore we are going to build a reconfigure forms. Um, this will be a button where you go back to the configure uh, model and you can add extra properties, uh, delete one. Uh, so you can uh, recreate or reconfigure your form. So that will make it uh, much easier. Odin, you can take over again. Uh, oh. You're going really fast. Uh, there, there has been a, the, there has been uh, a question um, from Elon. Are the public files carried over between environments as well? Uh, yes. Currently, the public files are bound to the environments, and when you delete an environment, you would need to re-enter the URL. Yes. Yeah, so the uh, public files will be uh, available in the new IDE as well. So you don't have to go back to the old environment. So you will stay in the same environment. So you don't have to log in again. Okay, I uh, think that answers the question. Please uh, let us know if uh, that answers your question. Um, if 
you or if anyone else has any more questions, don't be afraid to ask them. We'll be uh, waiting here to uh, answer some of your last question, as you uh, can see on the screen. That's it for now. We've hoped to have informed you on some of the new cool things that we're working on regarding the pages and actions and some of the new custom features that you can be expecting or already work on. If you have some feedback regarding the webinar or if you have some ideas, especially like Manuk said, you have some cool uh, ideas for events or steps, let us know. And well, till next time.